Hi, my name is Greg Hart. I'm a software architect on the Kylo team at ThinkBig. And this video is How to Wrangle Data Part 2. So we'll start off, we're going to create a new feed. This will be a data transformation feed. We're going to call it Event Stats. And we'll put it in the Venues category. So I'll just scroll down, e Venues, and continue to step two. There's no additional information I need to provide for a data source, so I'll continue to step three. Here, we want to do a join between two tables. So that is the venues.events table. So go ahead and add that. And then we also want to add the event venues table. So now that I've added them, uh, I can create a join by clicking and dragging between the two chevrons here. And that'll pop up a dialog allowing me to specify the connection name, the join type such as inner, left, or right join, and then the columns uh, to join on. And since we have two columns of the same name, those were automatically selected for us. So all we have to do is click Save. We do not need the ID columns, so we can deselect those columns. If we wanted to, we could go into advanced mode and type in our own Hive query. But when you do this, you cannot switch back to the regular visual query editor. And so only do this if you are sure that you want to uh, type in your own query. So we'll continue to step four. It'll go ahead and uh, execute that query for us and show us the results. So I want to analyze this data. I want to find the number of events and number of unique event names by city. So to do that, I'm going to start off by using a template. This blue function icon here, if you click on it, it'll provide you several function templates that we can use. So the first one I'm going to use is the aggregate template. This types in a formula for me and some placeholders uh, where you see the uppercase column uh, that I can fill in with my own data. So this first function is group by. Uh, this specifies uh, the group by part of my query. So here I want to group by the venue city and the venue state. So I'm going to use the concat function to combine those two into a single column. Uh, here uh, you can see this parameter ends with var args. That means I can pass in multiple values for that one parameter. So I'm going to pass in the venue city. I'm going to add a comma string and then the venue state. So this will create a single uh, column that has the venue city, a comma, and then the venue state. And I want to name this column city. So I'm going to press tab. I'm just going to highlight the next section. Here I want the number of events. So here I just have to type in one because that's one event per row. And then I'm going to call this new column events. I'm going to press tab again. Uh, this is for sum. I do not want sum, so I'm just going to delete that and type in a new function. This is going to be count distinct, so this is a number of unique event names. So count distinct of event name. And I'm going to name this new column unique events. I'm going to go ahead and add that function. And this can go ahead, aggregate the data, and show me the results. So I now should have one row per city with a number of events in that city and the number of unique uh, events in that city. But let's say I also wanted to know the popularity of that city. So I wanted to rate them. Uh, as low, average, or high popularity. I can do that 
by going back to the function menu and clicking on the conditional template. Uh, here, uh, I can use multiple when functions and an otherwise function. Uh, when allows you to specify a condition and the value for the column when that condition is true. So when events is less than 10, the popularity value will be low. When events is less than 100, the popularity value will be average. And I can press tab again. And then otherwise the popularity value is high. And I'll name this column popularity. So when I go ahead and add this function, then you can see uh, that uh, cities that have between 10 and 99 uh, events have an average popularity. Cities with less than 10 events have a low popularity. And New York City, that has over 100 events, it has a high popularity. However, I decided that this is not the stats I want to be testing. I want to try something else. So I'm going back to my history, and I'm going to undo those two functions I added. So I decided I want to try finding the number of events by event name and then pivot on the city. So to do that, we have to add the city column back in. So we're going to concat again on the venue city, add a comma, and the venue state. And we're going to call this new column city. So we'll go ahead and add that. So we now have our city column. So we can click on the functions icon again and go down to pivot. Uh, this will allow us to uh, uh, pivot on a selected column. The uh, group by is the same as the aggregate. So here we're going to group by on the event name. The pivot here only supports a string. So we have to type in the name of the column and can't use the variable like we did for event name. So if we here, we'll type in city. And then we want to aggregate uh, and just uh, count the number of rows or events. So we'll go ahead and add that. So that'll go ahead and calculate our pivot table. So for each row, we have a uh, event, and each column is the name of a city, and then we have the number of events uh, of that event in that city. So again, I decided this is not quite what I was looking for. Uh, I'm going to undo and try something else. So now I've decided I want to try finding the time between events at a venue. So first of all, I need to convert the start time column into a Unix timestamp. So I'm going to use the Unix timestamp function, uh, pass in the start time column, and uh, the format of this uh, column. So uh, the start time uh, starts off with the month. Then we have the day, year, hour, and minute. And we're going to call this new column start ts. So I'll go ahead and add that. So now I have the start ts column, which is the Unix timestamp of the start time column. So let's go back to our function menu. We'll use the window template. So here we have an aggregate function such as sum. Then we use the uh, over, so we have dot over, and then we specify how the window functions should work. Uh, so we have order by and a column. So I don't want to use sum for this. Uh, I want to use the lag function, which will return me the value of the previous column. So I want the previous uh, start timestamp. 
and uh, the number one for the previous row. So here you can see this parameter opt default value. This opt underscore part means that that uh, column is optional. I do not need to specify a value for that uh, uh, parameter to the function. So I'm just gonna close paren. Uh, we're gonna do the over function. So there's um, the over function takes a window spec. I can either pass in a, uh, a partition using the partition by, or I can order using the order by. So let's partition our data first. So we'll first partition by the uh, venue name, the venue city, and the venue state. And then we want to order by our start ts. So once uh, the data has been partitioned and ordered, then it will go ahead and calculate the lag function. But what I want is the difference between the last timestamp and the current timestamp. So I'm going to the start of this function and I'm going to write in start ts and subtract the value of the window function uh, from start ts. So now let's give this new column a name. So I'll surround this whole function with parentheses. Then I can use the dot as function to give it a name. So I'm going to call this seconds between. We'll go ahead and add that. And then now we have the seconds between column. So we can see our data is sorted uh, by start ts and it's uh, partitioned by the venue name, the venue city, and the venue state. So here at New York City uh, for the Al Hirschfeld Theater, uh, the start time uh, was in 2008. Um, for the first event, the second event was just a few hours later and then the third event was several days later, and we can see that's reflected in our seconds between column. Uh, for me, it's easier to see that in days, so I'm gonna convert from seconds between to days between. So I'm gonna use the round function, pass in the seconds between, divided by the number of seconds in a day, and we're going to round that uh, to uh, integer, so zero decimal places. And we'll call this new column days between. So once we add that, now we have the number of days between, much easier to read. I'll go ahead and hide these extra columns that I no longer need. So now that I have the data I want, I'll continue on to the next step. This looks right, I'll continue. Uh, select my merge strategy and my target format. And then I'll go to the properties, no additional properties needed. I'll go to my schedule. It's scheduled to run at noon every day by default. So I can go ahead and create that feed. And then that report will run every day at noon. So let's say you wanted to learn more about the functions provided by the Data Wrangler. You can open up the Spark documentation and all the functions available in the Data Wrangler uh, are available from three classes. The column class, the data set class. Uh, this is a Spark 2.0 data set. If you're looking at the Spark 1.0 documentation, this class is called data frame and the functions class. So here uh, we're looking at approx, count distinct, average, collect list. So all of these functions are available in the data wrangler as you see it. If you want additional information on a function, you can just click on that function and it gives you a little uh, details about what Spark version it was added in. Um, here column, uh, you can just 
in the data wrangler you would just be able to type in the name of the column if you have a string you just put a string value uh, and all of these would be converted to the appropriate type uh, when the function is called the column class is a little different since these are methods called on a column object uh, they were con converted to a regular function so take a uh, bitwise and for example instead of doing column dot bitwise and and then some other column what you would do is that you would call the bitwise and function and pass in two columns and this would uh, process the bitwise and uh, of those two columns the only exceptions are the as cast and over methods for those, you would specify the column name, dot, and then the method name, such as as, and its parameters. Uh, this is in contrast to where you're doing something like contains, where here Spark says it just has one parameter, but in Data Wrangler, we have two parameters. So you'd have contains the column that you're uh, running the method on, and then the parameter values. We looked at advanced functions such as aggregate, conditional, pivot, and window. And we looked at the Spark documentation and figured out how those map to our data wrangler functions. This has been How to Wrangle Data, Part 2.